Dealing with PTSD from a horror movie? Going so deep into character that they can't get out? There's no shame in going to therapy. Just ask these iconic actors. Lady Gaga is far more than a 13-time Grammy winner. She also received an Oscar nomination for her acting in Bradley Cooper's A Star Is Born. No one outside of Gaga's inner circle knows for sure whether or not she expected to secure another nomination for her role in Ridley Scott's House of Gucci, but her method acting approach makes it seem like she was hoping for a little more recognition. When she took on the role of Italian socialite Patrizia Reggiani, it never seemed to leave her. Spoiler alert for real-life events, but in 1995, Rajani paid two hitmen to kill her husband, Maurizio Gucci. Rajani's darkness seemed to permeate Gaga during production. As she told Variety, I was always Patrizia. I always spoke in my accent. I was still living my life. I just lived it as her. I don't consider myself a particularly ethical person but I am fair." This took a toll on Gaga, who needed mental health support while filming. She continued, "...I had a psychiatric nurse with me towards the end of filming. I sort of felt like I had to. I felt that it was safer for me. I have a sort of romantic relationship with suffering for your art that I developed as a young girl, and it just sometimes goes too far. And when it does go too far, it can be hard to reel it in on your own." Dakota Johnson may have been blindfolded and flogged during her time in the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy, but it was a different movie that got her to see a therapist. In 2018, Johnson appeared as lead character Susie Banyan in Luca Guadagnino's remake of the horror classic Suspiria. At a prestigious dance academy, Susie finds herself in the company of witches, and before long, she's undergoing a sinister transformation. In an interview with Elle in April 2018, Johnson stated that the movie, quote, me up so much that I had to go to therapy. She expanded on that during a press conference at the Venice Film Festival, saying, "...when you're working sometimes with dark subject matter, it can stay with you. And then to talk to somebody really nice about it afterwards is a really nice way to move on from the project." While she went to therapy after filming, Johnson did share that the experience of making the film itself was not difficult for her. She explained, "...it was the most fun and the most exhilarating and the most joyful that it could be. It wasn't that this film sent me to a ward, I just have a lot of feelings. Ever since he first popped up in The Sopranos as a kid in 1999, Michael B. Jordan has been a welcome presence in movies and television. He's headlined major franchises like the Creed films and appeared in popular TV series like Friday Night Lights. But one of his most famous characters is the same one that made him look into therapy. In Black Panther, Jordan's role as a fearless Eric Killmonger proved to be one of the most memorable villain performances in the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe, and the darkness of the part seemed to get to the actor. Jordan told Oprah Winfrey during an interview, "...I think just being in that kind of… that mind state, it caught up with me, and I got a little depressed." Jordan tried his best to be in what he called a lonely place during filming in order to channel Killmonger, but it came at a cost. Thankfully, he was able to unpack his emotions with the help of a professional. Honestly, therapy, just talking to somebody was something that really helped me out a lot. As far as having range as an actor is concerned, few people in Hollywood can match up to Val Kilmer. His filmography includes action classics like Heat and Top Gun, alongside hilarious comedies like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and Top Secret. Naturally, he takes his responsibility as a performer seriously. So when he decided to take a more method approach to playing Jim Morrison in the 1991 biopic The Doors, it impacted him pretty profoundly. Kilmer learned 50 songs for the movie and spent some time interviewing those close to the late musician. The actor took quite a bit of time trying to simulate everything he could about Morrison, including his appearance. As he told the Washington Post, I was dieting for months. I was down to about 158. It has also been alleged that Kilmer had the crew call him Jim during production. Kilmer denied at the time that he asked the crew to avoid speaking to him and claimed that a letter sent to the crew by their production manager asking them to stay away from the actor was not his doing. Kilmer noted that after playing Morrison, he had become more focused on his physical, spiritual, and mental health. It was later reported that Kilmer allegedly sought out therapy after finishing the film in order to get the character out of his system. Kira Knightley is now a household name, but it was her breakout role as Elizabeth Swan in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise that threw the British actor into the limelight at a young age. In the years since, Knightley has opened up about how that kind of fame impacted her at the time, and she now strives to support others who find themselves in similar situations. In 2018, she told Variety, "...I found that level of scrutiny and that level of fame really hard. You're in some ways still a child. It was traumatic, but it set up the rest of my career." She acknowledged that she didn't go through her difficult times alone, continuing, 
I'm unbelievably lucky now, and my career is in a place where I really enjoy it, and I have a level of fame that's much less intense. I can deal with it now, and that's great. But at the time, it was not so great, and took many years of therapy to figure it out. Knightley concluded the interview by admitting that she's extremely protective of the young actresses she works with. We will fight. And you will die. Most people probably recognize Lakeith Stanfield as Andre from Get Out or Darius from Atlanta, but it was his Oscar-nominated role in the 2021 historical drama Judas and the Black Messiah that made him seek out therapy. Stanfield played William O'Neill, an FBI informant who played a role in the assassination of Black Panther Party state head Fred Hampton. The actor told Level that one moment of co-star Daniel Kaluuya felt a little too real, saying, With somebody like Daniel, who I just respect as a human and an artist, as Fred Hampton, it felt like I was actually poisoning Chairman Fred Hampton. So sometimes your body thinks that's real, everything you're putting it through. I realize going forward, before I step into something like that again, maybe have a therapist. Judas and the Black Messiah helped Stanfield come to terms with the idea of seeing a mental health professional, as he previously had a more negative view of therapy. He continued, I was always throwing off therapy. I never wanted to try it. Thankfully, finding the right therapist and being able to talk over Zoom made it palatable enough for Stanfield. He also revealed that he had found meditation and yoga to be very healing. Imagine seriously bulking up to take part in the MCU, only to have your movie get hit with a 47% critical rating on Rotten Tomatoes. That's exactly what happened to Kumail Nanjiani, who was so affected by negative reviews and comments toward 2021's Eternals that he sought out a therapist. Nanjiani took on the role of the superhero Kingo in hopes that being in a Marvel movie directed by a recent Oscar winner would boost his career. But instead, Eternals broke records as the most widely disliked movie in the MCU at the time. During an appearance on the podcast Inside of You, Nanjiani confessed, The reviews were bad, and I was too aware of it. I was reading every review and checking too much. Nanjiani started to go to weekly therapy sessions, as he felt that his obsession was taking a toll on both him and his wife. He admitted that he still talks about how Eternals impacted him with his therapist, but has since been able to stop worrying about the public or critical response. Cut! Okay, everyone, that was good. I think we can do 10% better. That was beautiful. Very, very good. Ari Aster's Hereditary is a tough watch, to say the least. With its themes of child death and demonic possession, there's a good chance that some people needed therapy after seeing it. Actually, being in the film was even scarier, as actor Alex Wolf has revealed. During an exclusive interview with Looper, Wolf said, That movie did about as much damage to me as a movie can do. It really affected me. You really don't want to sound pretentious or self-serious or like anything is too serious, because we have a cushy job in a lot of ways. But this, emotionally, it was one of those tough ones. Wolf claims that participating in the film caused him to lose sleep as well. And considering the horrific content of the movie and the lengths Wolf had to go for it, it's no surprise that it impacted his mental health. The actor commented to Vice, I don't think you can go through something like this and not have some sort of PTSD afterwards. It's hard to make a movie that's both beautiful and shocking, but 1981's Possession is a stunning work of psychological horror thanks to Isabel Ajani's lead performance. Ajani stars as Anna, the wife of Sam Neill's Mark, who starts seeing someone else but refuses to reveal who. She also portrays Helen, the teacher of Mark and Anna's son, Bob. But it's her time as Anna that earned her Best Actress accolades from the Cannes Film Festival and the Cesar Awards. Of course, it wasn't without a heavy toll. The role of Anna, who has a nervous breakdown, turns psychotic and hooks up with a hideous creature, was very emotionally and physically draining for Ajani. The actor revealed long after the film was shot that she went to therapy for several years and believed she developed post-traumatic stress disorder from her time on set. Further evidence of the impact playing Anna had on Ajani came from the film's director, Andrzej Zulowski, who claimed in a 2000 documentary that the actor attempted suicide following her portrayal of Anna. Sam Neill added to the discourse during a 2021 episode of Kermode and Mayo's Film Review, saying of Zulowski, I call it the most extreme film I've ever made. He asked of us things that I wouldn't and couldn't go to now. I think I only just escaped that film with my sanity barely intact. 
The 2016 film Suicide Squad featured some much-discussed performances, including Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn and Jared Leto as the Joker. While it was rumored that Leto truly embraced his role by sending odd gifts to his castmates, which Leto later denied, it was David Ayer's directing style that resulted in the need for an on-set therapist by the end of production. Adam Beach, who portrayed Slipknot, told E! Online, David Ayer is about realism, so if your character is tormented, he wants you to torment yourself. He wants the real thing. The actor described the on-set professional as a life coach rather than a traditional therapist. The intent was for the cast to have someone around to talk through the darker aspects of the job so that they, quote, don't disappear somewhere and then don't show up for work. You cut and run, I'll blow your head off. Beach did not comment on whether anyone took the director up on the offer and spoke with a life coach during filming. But it was made clear to the cast that Aya didn't want them to take the dark tone of the movie home with them at the end of the day. The therapist, who the actor said was a friend of the director, was there just in case anyone had any truly villainous impulses.